the different water profiles that we have identified in the previous lesson will allow us to determine the flow in a typical situation as the one sketched here. The flow between an upstream underflow gate and a downstream reservoir. But before going to the calculation of such water profiles, we will analyze the different possible upstream and downstream boundary conditions. At the upstream side, we have a, a gate that controls the flow and determines the discharge. In the case of an underflow gate, the water depth depends on the design of the gate. Usually, a contraction of the flow occurs as sketched here and illustrated in the figure. As a consequence, the upstream water depth HV will be smaller than the gate opening A and a contraction coefficient will be used to account for the reduction in discharge induced by this contraction, as we will see later. But for a well-designed gate, as illustrated on the right figure, there is no contraction of the flow in such a way that the upstream flow depth, HV, is directly obtained from the gate opening A, taking into account the bed slope here if necessary. If we focus on the upstream conditions, we can identify three possible situations. First, the simple free surface flow below the gate, for which the discharge is calculated as indicated using Torricelli's formula. The discharge directly depends on the water depth H0 in the reservoir, on the gate width L and the opening A here, and on the contraction coefficient mu. Such a situation corresponds to an upstream control of the flow. The gate opening controls the water depth HV and this, situ and this situation is only possible if HV is below the critical depth HC, which corresponds to an upstream controlled water profile. The second case is the submerged hydraulic jump. The discharge depends on the same parameters as before, but also on the water depth HM of the roller area. We can see from this expression that the submergence of the gate results in a reduction of the discharge. Such a submerged flow, flow is less efficient than a free surface flow below the gate. We also know that the water profile starting here at the sequence depth H2 is a subcritical water profile, depending on downstream conditions. So in that case, we expect a trial and error procedure to find the solution. Finally, we have the case where the gate opening becomes so large that the flow detaches from the gate. Two situations can occur. Either the depth H1 here at the section of the gate is the critical depth and the channel downstream is a, a steep slope channel. In that case, we have a control section that is the starting point of S2 water profile and is a supercritical flow in the channel. If the depth H1 is larger than Hc, the flow at the gate is subcritical and the water profile will be controlled by the downstream conditions. This situation can occur for both mild and steep slopes in the downstream channel. In any case, the discharge will be calculated as indicated here and will depend on the depth H1 at the section of the gate. For the downstream conditions, the simplest situation is just a direct connection with the downstream level as sketched here for a subcritical flow and a downstream water depth larger than the critical depth HC. However, how can we be sure that such a simple connection is indeed physically possible? If we consider that the flow ends in a large reservoir, we can compare the situation to the one sketched here, where we have a sudden enlargement and make the analogy with pipe flows. We can write the Euler momentum balance 1 on the control volume A, B, C, D, F, E, 
considering that the only significant forces are the pressure forces, which results in equation 2. The pressure distribution is hydrostatic along AB and CD because the water is almost at rest and along BC because the flow is parallel. We ex can express the difference in piezometric head between the two sections as in equation 3, considering a horizontal pipe so that Z2 equals Z1. Then, using the continuity equation 4, we can replace the areas in equation 2 by the velocities and express the difference in piezometric head as in equation 5. From this equation, we see that if A2 becomes infinite, V2 will approach 0, will become almost equal to 0, and H2 is equal to H1. Extending this conclusion to a large downstream reservoir that can be considered at rest, if the piezometric head at the downstream end of the channel or the river and in the reservoir are the same, um, and the, then the water levels are also the same, which means that the direct connection assumption is valid. In the case of a subcritical flow, we have seen that a direct connection with the downstream water level corresponding to a water depth HDS larger than the level corresponding to the critical depth HC is possible. If the downstream level decreases in such a way that the depth HDS becomes smaller than HC, a direct connection is no more possible. In that case, the water profile goes until the critical depth, here, and the flow then just spills freely in the reservoir. The reservoir is completely disconnected from the water profile in such a situation. If the flow is supercritical, different situations can be identified depending on the downstream level. For a downstream level below HC, as indicated by the situation number 1, the flow just spills freely in the reservoir through point A. Indeed, no direct connection is possible downstream for a water profile controlled by the upstream conditions. If the downstream level is larger than HC, there, are, there is a possibility of hydraulic jump. However, this only happens if the sequent level at point Z, indicated by Z prime here, is below the downstream level. In situation number 2, Z prime is above point B. So here Z prime above point B that corresponds to the downstream water level. So the hydraulic jump is pushed back in the reservoir and does not appear in the channel. In situation number 3, Z prime is below point C corresponding to the downstream water level. So a hydraulic jump is formed and its location can be found by calculating the curve of the sequent depth corresponding to the supercritical water profile, that is the green dashed line here. And then the subcritical flow starting um, from point C. The intersection of these two curves is the position of the hydraulic jump. This means that the flow at the downstream end of the channel now is a subcritical flow and we have just a direct connection with the downstream level at point C similar to this case here uh, that we have seen before. All the possible upstream and downstream conditions are summarized here. As we have seen, when we are in the situation of a submerged hydraulic jump, a trial and error procedure is needed to find HM, H2 and the discharge Q. To this end, a special theorem will be helpful. This will be developed in the next lesson. Goodbye!